Greetings, knowledge seekers. The Force is with you. My name is Prion Joni, and today we're going to talk about this brand new stem separation ready DJ controller from Pioneer DJ, the DDJ Flex 10. So there's a lot of things to unpack about this unit. It's record box and Serato supported, not to mention all the stem related features work for both. It also has a new feature called Mix Point Link, which works for record box, and it even has DMX output that you can use with record box lighting. That means you can run an entire show, audio and visuals, all from a single controller. I'm not gonna be able to share every single thing about this controller in this video. I'm just gonna share with you some of the design highlights and features I like and unique ways I would use it. But if you wanna watch a full technical rundown on the Flex 10, follow this link for Pioneer DJ USA's overview right here. So let's get ready to mix some stems, but first, a quick word. This video is brought to you by Direct Music Service. Check out the description or the pinned comment below for discount codes. Pray on your knee. May the force be with you. So, friendly disclosure, as many of you already know, I am an official product demonstrator for Pioneer DJ, but this video right here, it's not produced in partnership or collaboration with them. This one I'm doing on my own, which is my personal bit on how I would use it for the time I have the unit still here. As always, with DJ gear on my channel, this is a demo and not a review. So, the DDJ Flex 10, Flex 10, the DDJ Flex 10 stems from the legacy of the DDJ 1000 as well as the DDJ 1000 SRT. No pun intended. This time, both software, Recordbox and Serato, work on this one DJ controller. The Flex 10 is not only the first Pioneer DJ controller with dedicated part separation controls, but it's also introduced alongside with the new part separation capable version of Recordbox. And yes, like I said earlier, you can use all the stem related features on both Recordbox and Serato, making the Flex 10 the first DJ controller that lets you control the stem volume in Serato with the EQ knobs in a feature called Parts ISO. If you've been using Serato stems, you know Serato has a four part separation, vocal, melody, bass, and drums. On Recordbox, it has a three part stem separation, drum, vocal, and instruments. Instruments is melody and bass combined as one. The design language of the Flex 10 is based on the three part stem separation. Three buttons for active parts and three EQ knobs for parts isolator. If you're using Serato, the bass and melody stems will be combined as one under the instrument buttons. But if you really like using your four part Serato stem pads and stem effects, you can still pull that up under the performance pads. Just go into your Serato settings and replace any of the available pad modes with Serato stems. So we'll deep dive into track separation in a bit but let's talk about the general design. The Flex 10 is the same width and the same height as the DDJ 1000, but it has increased in length. I know some of you want to know if it fits your DDJ 1000 case, and the answer is, it depends. If your case or bag has the clearance for the length or has foam sections that you can remove to increase the length, then you'll be fine. If you have a case or bag that can only fit a DDJ 1000 exactly as it is and there's no available space that you can increase, then you'll require a new one. Oh, by the way, it fits the recently released Jetpack Glide system if you're looking for a complete portability solution for your controller and laptop. Also, I'm sure Magma and Headliner will have something for the DDJ Flex 10, so be sure to look on their websites for their latest cases. It still has the CDJ size jog wheels with a tension control knob but the sides have been changed to match the styling of the Flex series. The Crossfader is the newest generation of the Magvel Fader. It's not the Magvel Fader Pro version, which you can find on scratch focused products like the S11 and the Rev7. Those are the ones with the tension control knob on it, but it is a magnetic fader. And this time it uses a four sensor system as opposed to the previous two sensor system. This increases the resolution of the fader movement, giving you more accurate volume and cut control. Now let's talk about stems, the track separation. Each deck has a blue, green, and red button for active parts for drums, vocals, and instruments. Drums is blue, vocals is green, and instruments is red. If you want to solo the instrumental, meaning everything but the vocals, simply mute the vocals. If you want to solo the vocals instead for an acapella, mute the drums and instruments. Now we get how the active parts work, but why is there a little arc of parts buttons on the effects? Well, this is the effects part select. If you've ever seen a DJM 900 Nexus 2, DJM V10, or more recently, the DJM A9, 
the effects frequency buttons, this is a similar concept. But instead of the effects applying to a specific frequency, it can affect a specific stem part. So say you want to apply an echo on just the vocals and you don't want it getting muddied up by the other instruments. You can apply the echo effect on just the vocals. So let's choose echo, channel one, one beat duration, and we're gonna mute the drums and the instruments on the effects park select. See how you hear it just on the vocals? Now some other cool things you can do is syncopate the drums by using the roll or delay effect on just the drums or the drums and the instruments. So we're just gonna keep drums active on the effects part select, put this on delay, two beats, and here we go. We can do that with roll as well. Now my favorite way of controlling the stems is using the EQ knobs where you activate the parts isolator. To convert it, hold shift and click any of the headphone cue buttons. Keep in mind, once it's activated, it's gonna blink while you're holding the shift knob. It stops blinking when you let go of the shift knob, but when you start moving the parts, it starts blinking again to indicate that you do have parts being manipulated on that track. Now each EQ knob can control the volume of each of the three parts. So here's an important thing to note if you're like me who goes back and forth between Serato and Rekordbox. The order of the parts are slightly different between the two software. Both software, the bass knob is the drums. But in Rekordbox, the mid is the vocals, while in Serato, it's the instruments. And Rekordbox has instruments with the treble knob while in Serato, the treble knob is vocals. Rekordbox follows the same order of the way the active parts are laid out. Drums, vocals, instruments. So it's drums, vocals, instruments. Now if you want to change it in Rekordbox, you can always remap it. Let me know down below if you want me to show you how to do that. So here's where we can get really creative with how we use stems. For those of you who don't know what Instant Double is, it's a feature that lets you basically copy and paste a playing track from one deck to another, exactly from the position it was playing from the original deck. With Parts Instant Double, instead of copying and pasting the whole song to another deck, you can cut one of the parts, say the vocals, and paste it to the other deck. This way you can scratch an EQ or do a slip move to a single stem. By default, Rekordbox's instant double is set left to right in the direction where it's gonna move. So say I wanna move just the vocals to this deck. To do a stem instant double, just hold shift and double click the stem you want on the deck you're throwing that stem to. So I'm gonna be playing this. I'm gonna hold shift, and double click vocal. Now vocal is over here and the instrumental is over here. So I basically split my parts. Now what if I did a stem instant double, I scratched it, but I want it to go back on track where the vocals originally was. Well, all I have to do is do a shift, double click the vocals and unmute it because it's coming from a muted vocal and it's gonna be back to normal. So let's try that. Shift, double click. We got a vocal over here and I'm gonna scratch this. Now I want it to reset to normal. Now I'm back to the same position I was originally. Now by default, Rekordbox's Parts Instant Double is set left to right or right to left. But if you go in your settings, Extensions, Track Separation, Parts Instant Double, set it to Up, Down Decks. That means the Parts Instant Double function can separate the stems to the adjacent deck. Basically, you can split instrumental and vocal on the same side. And if you engage dual deck by holding shift 
and hitting the deck select button, it will lock the adjacent decks together so your jog, tempo, hot cues, and looping will affect both decks simultaneously. So you can control a split track as one song. So let's go into four deck vertical mode and I'll show you how this works. So I have a track on channel two and I want to split the stems between two and four. So once again, I have this track. I'm going to switch the deck select to channel four. Hold shift, double click vocals. Now, now they're split. Now I'm going to hold shift and hit deck select. Now both tracks on deck two and four can be controlled like it's one track. And because the hot cues are the same, they will always be in the same position. And if you want to get out dual control, you just hold shift and undo dual deck. Now I know I'm not doing too much of an audio demonstration here because of copyright and monetization, but check out the Flex 10 video on the Pioneer DJ USA channel because I did a split of the Peter Piper track on deck two and four, and I used dual deck to hit the hot cue into position, then disable dual deck so I can scratch the vocal breakdown of bad meaning bad over its own drum beat. Link is down below. Now if you separate two songs, Say you split it vocal and instrumental on two and four, and then another vocal and instrumental on one and three. You can mix, scratch, and juggle on four decks with the same ease and control of just two. And you know, there's always that DJ who will troll you. Why do you need four channels? The average DJ only needs two. And side note, whenever someone tries to make that argument, the average DJ does not need or do that. Why do those DJs think it's a flex to compare themselves to the average DJ. Like who's trying to be average? Always found that kind of goofy. Moving along, if you haven't noticed, the LED jog wheel ring changes colors representing your active stem parts. So if I solo the drums, it's blue. Solo the vocals, it's green. Solo the instruments, it's red. This helps you know what stem is active on the deck you're on. It's also helpful to know which deck you're on when you split the stems to adjacent decks. The default jog setting when you have all the active parts on is white. When you solo any of the parts, it's the color of that stem. When you have two parts active, it will mix the color. So blue and red, it becomes purple. Drums and vocals becomes teal. And vocals and instruments becomes yellow. Now, if you don't like the color mixing, you can actually change the jog mode to jog mode two, and it'll make the two parts active stay on white. So if I go into my settings, under controller, on the deck tab, and I scroll down to jog, not the first one, go to the second one, go to active parts, linked to jog two. So now when I have two parts active, it turns white. In Rockerbox, it's in your Rockerbox settings. For Serato, you can change this in your settings utility for the Flex 10. The LCD display on the jog wheel has been expanded. There's deck info that display your basic deck telemetry and overall waveform. We got waveform mode with stack waveforms, and it also supports the three band waveform, by the way. Artwork display will display your album artwork. And just like the DTJ Rev7, you have your DJ logo display as well for your own logo or custom art. Now without a logo, it'll just show the record box logo there. Toggling through the displays is easy. Just hold shift and left and right on the page buttons. And if you wanna toggle the digital rotation marker, Double click the shift button and it'll disappear. Now, if you want to see more gear videos like this one, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button with that bell icon. It helps me bring you more content like this one. Now, let's talk about Rockerbox exclusive features, starting with mix point link. Now, this feature is a lot easier to use than it is to explain it. In a nutshell, what mix point link is, it's a way to quickly automate and trigger the play button of an incoming track while you're in the mix. So if you have a song playing on deck one, it can actually arm and automate the play button on deck two. It's not mixing it for you. Every other controller is yours, but it simplifies being able to choose a mix point based on existing hot cues that's ahead of the mix. 
That way, if you're manipulating stems or effects, your hands can be free. You're not busy trying to tempo bend, press play right on the one. This eliminates the need to tempo bend right after you hit play. And you know that you don't always hit play exactly at the one. Mix Point Link ensures that. And it's super useful for mixing in key on breakdowns where there are no drums. So to prepare for this, it's a good idea to set the cue points based on the first beat of each phrase right on the grid line. If you have hot cues for tone plays or creative triggering, don't worry. Rekordbox supports up to 16 hot cues per deck. If you're live in a mix and you want to use Mix Point Link, but don't have hot cues set, you can easily do that by instant doubling onto the deck and setting your cue points live on the opposite deck. Now, to use Mix Point Link, we have to go in to our horizontal view, and we're going to open the Mix Point Link display. It looks different from your moving waveform because it's actually the overall view of your waveform. So what we're going to do is we're going to press play on this track. And we're going to use the mix point select buttons to line up this track where we want it to line up to. So I want it to start from hot cue, from this first hot cue, which we'll set for the current cue. And I want it to hit play right when hot cue 2 on the first track is at. So when we're moving this around, right there is where we see that teal hot cue. And we see that orange hot cue on the second track. So now that we like where we are, we're going to arm it by pressing link and it's no longer blinking. Now this is going to automatically play right when it crosses that playhead. See now this track is playing. And like I said, I found it easier to use than it is to explain. Because once I learned how to do it, I could do this on an entire set after just trying it once. For me, it's really fun to use with drum and bass because I can do an entire set mixing on the breakdowns where there's no drums. When they're in key, they sound so musical and you don't have to second guess yourself if the tempo is off. And instead of worrying about your tempo bending, I'm focused on the stem controls. Now for record box lighting, I won't be deep diving with this feature because I'm still learning how my DMX lights work. I'm still a lighting noob, but not a lightsaber noob. But the Flex 10 has a DMX output for controlling your DMX lights through record box. If you didn't already know, record box has the ability to automatically create light show patterns for every song you analyze in your library. And it gives you additional controls to customize them. This way, you don't need additional software or a DMX interface. You can plug your lights directly to your DJ controller and the lights will be controlled by the same software you're DJing on. Now, what about Serato users? Now, while the lights can't directly be controlled by Serato, you can, in fact, plug two computers to the Flex 10 and have the second computer running Rekordbox to control the lights. So if you're not doing a back-to-back -back set with another DJ, which oftentimes in a private event, you really aren't doing that, you can use the second computer connection for lighting control. Now keep in mind, the best results for song-specific lighting is to spin from Rekordbox. But your option to use Rekordbox lighting is still there when you're using Serato. You'll just need another laptop. And there's even a whole process that involves Ableton Link where you can sync the tempo with Rekordbox to your Serato. If you want to know more on that, let me know down in the comments below. And the two laptop connectivity is made possible with the upgraded USB Type-C ports. These ports are reverse compatible if you have an older computer. But I would figure if you're using Serato stems with real-time analysis, it's a good chance you're running a laptop with USB Type-C. Check out the Pioneer DJ USA overview right here for a full deep dive. And check out my DDJ Flex 10 performance video over here. Let me know what you think about the DDJ Flex 10 in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, the force is with you always.